I'll just decide. I probably should have told you this before we started filming, but I can usually do one thing at a time. <laughs> my wife, my wife even said that she's like, Kevin, does JD know that you can't multitask? <laughs> right, right. So I'm like, so I, I, the question I have for you is, do you want me to talk or do you want me to paint? That's why I gave you something super simple. <laughs> I'm so glad. I feel, like, I feel like we should exchange our hats. Yours still has a sticker on it, which I just realized. Oh, so yours is like super. Okay, so yeah, I've always, I love your. Well, by the way, so we have the show the people. Yeah. Similar branding, right? Yeah. It's similar the black inspiration. And white, very simple. The black and white, very very chic. We're very chic people, but I, this was the this was the one of my conditions. I had, I was the very demanding guest. I had a condition. I said, I want to trade hats on the He's air. He's been trying to get on here since yes. I started doing it. <laughs> since day one. I wanted to get on this podcast. Shameless. Shameless. <laughs> All right, here you go. And I'm going to put, I'm going to wear mine with the sticker on it. Sweet. The whole rest of the show. Very so good. Right. I, I got a big head. I got a big head. I bought a pair. So I'm like, All right, here we go. Yeah. I love this. I love this show. I love, I've seen all the episodes. I love it. I love the concept. Hey everybody, you are watching Paint Dry. I'm JD. I'm the director of Palmetto Paint PC. And this is the video series where I sit down with a Bay County local and learn a little bit more about what they do. Um, before I introduce my guest, I do want to say thank you to everyone who watches these. Um, I'm kind of shocked every time I get a notification from Facebook or Instagram or YouTube that someone else has watched an episode. Because <laughs> I really thought it would be like, you know, two or three people that come to all of our classes would watch it, and that'd probably be about it. Way to sell it, JD. I know, but. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys. Um, and no, this was never really meant to be like a weekly or monthly thing. It just kind of. I create them when I have time and whenever my guests' schedule works out for it. So thank you guys for watching. Um, this time, my guest is Mr. Kevin Elliott, um, home dabbler, wee -wah films, chicken lover, teacher. But not in a weird way. <laughs> as soon as I said that, I was like, crap. It came out the way you do it. And so many other things, a man of many hats, including one of ours. Um, <laughs> terrible joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so Kevin, thank you for coming on. Absolutely, dude. <laughs> I, well, uh, the people probably don't know, but um, I think you pitched this idea to me like before you started it, didn't you? Not yeah, pitched it, like a, it just ran yeah. around me. I was like, do you think it's a good idea do, before by the way, I started doing it? Do the people know our history, you and me? I doubt Our it. history together? I doubt it. People do you know the, that you were a student of mine at FSU? I was back in, when did I graduate? 2014? I don't know. No, it was 2014. So yeah. 2017. So, whatever that was. So, JD was a student of mine <laughs> at FSU in my public relations writing class. Uh -huh. Do you remember what you wrote your new blue song? Because I do. I think it was Palmetto Bay. It was Palmetto Bay. Yeah. It sure was. It was. Yeah, yeah. It was in you the whole time. a lot up. <laughs> yeah, so, J so JD was a student of mine at FSU. Which I guess leads up to why when you had the idea for this podcast, you, you were just kind of asking around like, is this a terrible idea? I was asking people who do videos. Is this who a make videos, idea? right. Is this a terrible <laughs> idea? And little did you know that I will, if somebody comes to me with an idea, I already love it. I never say no to ideas. I'm just like, that is an amazing, you should go with that. And because I love to encourage just, people. Just the, the instigator. And look at this. This is now, now you have tens and tens of viewers. And they're... so, in all <laughs> honesty, I mostly do this for myself because yeah. I like to sit down with people and paint. <laughs> Kevin is a local savant, honestly. He knows all things local. <laughs> Um, if you were at a local event, you probably will see him, especially if it's something downtown, yeah. either behind a camera or directing somebody with a camera or, or just hanging bossing out. Bossing people around. That's what bossing I do people best. around. That's what I do best. That's what I bring to the table. <laughs> bossing. So Kevin is one of the great minds behind We Walk Films, and I'm going to let him tell you about that because there's a lot to tell. We Walk Films. Yeah. I Speaking of students... Um, I had this student years and years ago named Courtney and I'm going to be honest and I've told Courtney this so she knows this now that I <laughs> frankly when I saw her first video I didn't even really remember her name right she's a student <laughs> she was a student you know F or whatever yeah <laughs> and um, but anyway I uh, she friended me on Facebook as students do sometimes and I was just watching, you know, mindlessly scrolling Facebook one night, as one does, and I saw this video for a Mumford & Sons concert. I love Mumford & Sons, everybody loves Mumford & Sons. And I'm watching this, what I think is an official Mumford & Sons video. Mm -hmm. It's of a concert that they did somewhere. Right. It's amazing, and I'm like, oh, this is a great video. 
<laughs> and, then, and then as I, about halfway through, I notice a familiar face walk into the frame and it's Courtney. And at this point, I literally, I was like, is that my student? I didn't remember her name. I was like, is that, wait a minute. And it all came together for me and I realized, oh my gosh, she shot this video. This is her video. I thought it was, yeah. you know, she was sharing a Mumford and Sons. Oh my gosh. And I, I have background in, in video production by that point. And it was one of those rare moments in life where you're just like, I've just met a genius. You know how to, like an out of the box <laughs> genius because it's, it's, um, you don't have to be a genius to be an artist by any stretch. You can be a super successful no. artist. <laughs> Look at you. I mean, come on. But you can be a super successful artist. And, but this, this kid was, a, was just a genius. And so, um, anyway, fast forward, I told her that I said, I think you're a genius at this. And she was like, what are you? I mean, I said, I mean, by the way, didn't start a business right away. Yeah. I just said, listen, I'm your professor, and I, I kind of feel obliged to tell you, you are special at this. And she was getting like a psychology degree and was gonna go work at the health department or something. I'm like, okay, look, I'm not your mother, and I can't tell you what to do, but you will waste your life <laughs> if you do that job. Go pursue video. So she left, she graduated, she went on, and I didn't talk to her for two years. And I, but I kept seeing her stuff on Facebook, and sure enough, she started doing weddings and doing things, and, and you start yeah. seeing video. And I, I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm watching. And and she just keeps getting better and better and better. And so fast forward two years, um, I'm on a, I'm part of a group called Alignment Bay County mm -hmm. that does stuff for the school system and stuff like that. We're in this thing and um, Lori Allen, hey Lori, of the Children's Advocacy Center. Have you had Lori on yet? I have not. You gotta have Lori. Uh, okay, hey I'm, Lori. Hey Lori. <laughs> Yeah, Lori's got to come on. But Lori Allen. Are they a nonprofit? Would you find they are a nonprofit. They're <laughs> made. They are. They are. They, I could talk all day about CAC. But um, Lori is the executive director. She was on that group with me. And she goes, Look, we need to do a, um, we want to do a school attendance campaign. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any money. <laughs> and we need a video company. And so she said, Does anybody know anybody? And I, I immediately thought of Courtney because mm -hmm. I've been looking for an excuse <laughs> to work with her. And I said, I said, Lori, I don't know if this will work out. I have a former student who I've basically been stalking on Facebook, who I haven't talked to in two years, but if you want me to, I'll ask if she wants to make a video with me. <laughs> now, that, there's a pitch for you, right? Like, <laughs> you have to be really this is real. careful how you work that. <laughs> this is real, right? You're, you're right, because she's 17 years younger than I am. And, and so, and Lori's like, Lori, to her credit, is just like, I'm game for anything, whatever. Yeah. So I, sitting in the meeting, I sent Courtney a Facebook message. I said, hey, I'm, this, I'm still Mr. Elliot at this point. I was like, hey, this is Mr. Elliot from, from class. Um, you wanna make a video? I mean, you know, it was just like that. Yeah. And thankfully for her and for me, she did not call the police. <laughs> she said yes. <laughs> and we made that first video in the, and the moment we started working together was like a lightning strike. We just, and you as an artist, you probably, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, probably with Alex, with your business partner, maybe. Oh yeah, when the, when the idea just lines up. Boom, I yeah. mean, and temperament, uh -huh. artistic vision, every, it never happened, this never happened. That's why, that's why most artists are like cranky loners, right? Because nobody knows what's in their brain and they can't explain it to people. <laughs> This is real. This yeah, is real artist yeah. talk, right? And so, but she, I mean, oh my gosh. And so that we did a few side projects and I have to give a shout out to Lori Allen. Anytime I ever, ever, ever talk about the origin of our business, because Lori looked at the two of us because we kept doing side projects. Yeah. We did a couple for Lori. Lori looked at us and goes, you two have got to do this for a business. Like you have to do the, you guys are made. This is, and that got us thinking like, let's get serious about this. So Lori, we owe it all to you. <laughs> that's real. Um, so that's us, but we have a real documentary style, real cinematic, real emo. Like, and if you haven't seen their video, <laughs> real emo, <laughs> if you haven't seen their videos, I'll put a link in the description. By the way, and, I, and then I'll get back on topic. Do people know what JD stands for? Because you have the coolest name known to man. Do you I like to let people guess. What do you, you know what it is. I know exactly yeah. what it is. And I want to tell people, do you want me to, to tell you, you want to keep it secret? No, I mean, most You have an amazing know. name. Go ahead. Yeah, most okay, if you didn't know this, JD's name is James Dean Justice. 
Now, the reason that the fact that you don't go, you don't every room you walk into and say, Hi, I'm James Dean Just Justice, it sounds like the coolest superhero ever, Marvel character, and you go by JD. I've been meaning to talk to you about this. <laughs> my granddad was James, my dad is James Dell, so he goes by Dell, and then I'm James Dean, so it just ends up being JD. What One of my granddads name. was James, my other granddad was Dean, so <laughs> it just worked out. It's a beautiful, <laughs> oh my gosh. So, anyway. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the people we work for, it was funny. We put our because our style is really particular, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's not for everybody, and it's it's, and so we put it out, you know, like a little fledgling bird. We threw it in the world, and I hope you fly. <laughs> we put it out there, and and what we started with, with was a um, a docu series called Craft. Mm -hmm. um, it turned out to be just our favorite work we we've ever done, and that we keep doing. It is really cool. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And But what it boiled down to is we had no portfolio to speak of. Right. And so we had to just do something that would show people what we could do that we could build a portfolio. So I was riding my lawnmower one day. This is as all great this ideas. Is, as, it's just how it goes, guys. Get on the lawnmower if you got a brain block. I was on the lawnmower one day and it hit me. I was like, wait a minute. All my friends are artists. And artists will just do anything. Right? And I said, yes. okay. <laughs> It pretty much. I said, we'll go with whatever. <laughs> we'll just do like whatever, man. And so I, I texted Courtney and said, I have an idea for a docu-series about artists and artisans uh -huh. in our local, like our friends. Right, yeah. And let's do an episode on a different art form each time. And that'll and, and because they're not paying us, we can make it exactly the way we want to make it. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. We have yeah. total freedom. And I said, what do you think? We'll put it out there, and if anybody bites on it, then we'll have a business, and if not, then you and I have a really fun hobby. <laughs> and, and a really cool portfolio. And a really cool, yeah. And yeah. she said, let's do it. So my, uh, I literally made a spreadsheet with all my artist friends. <laughs> I'm still working, I have like 30 of them in there. The first one was Heather Clements. Uh -huh. I said, hey, <laughs> can we make a, kind of like I pitched Courtney. It might yeah. be a better pitch than I think. Hey, can we make a video about you? <laughs> <laughs> and like any artist, she's like, cool, whatever. So we did, and, and we, we didn't, don't even ask details or anything. No, no, we're no, no, saying, no details. Like, no, just say, like yeah. we're gonna be over next Thursday. She's like, all right, cool, come, come on over. <laughs> so we did that episode. I did an episode on Jason Kretzer, who I know has been a guest on this show. Uh -huh. uh, we did an episode on Jason. We did one on Heather. We did one on Jason Hedden, the the, uh -huh. the stand-up comic and theater professor and all-around great guy. We started putting these episodes out there, and my phone started ringing. And this is all going to, you asked me 38 minutes ago what, who some of our clients 38 are. minutes this ago. Is, um, <laughs> where, this is where it goes. We put that out there and my phone started ringing. Mm -hmm. And people were like calling me from, okay, so then it evolved, it, which was, was great because people wanted that style. Um, and so I, I got calls from Tracy Johnstone, who owned a bunch of McDonald's in town. So whose we, office is here. Whose office, office is here, yes, mm -hmm. in, in my space downtown, by the way. <laughs> Tracy called me and wanted us to do, we did video, so we ended up working for McDonald's. Mm -hmm. um, we do work for CAC for Lori. We've done work for Florida's Great Northwest, for Gulf County, Florida Tourism, for Destination Panama City, Vin, Jen Vigil, the amazing mm -hmm. Jen Vigil at Destination Panama City. We've done work for HCA Gulf Coast Hospital. We've, I mean, it's bonkers. We don't, we literally, it's, and Courtney and I just keep looking at each other going, stuff. how is this working? <laughs> how is this working? What the heck just happened? This is working. This, we, these are, we're trying to bring real talk to the, to the yeah. this is really, we look at each other and go, do you do that with Alex? Oh yeah. Like, yeah. How, did, how did this actually we, work? At the end of every year, for the last five years, we've yeah. looked at each other and gone, how is this still going? <laughs> I know. I'm so got out of control. One of my favorite things is to tell the truth about the artistic life, because I think a lot of artists, or aspiring artists think, oh my gosh, these people are some like, oh, you have no, no. we're looking at each other going, <laughs> did they, did we just do a video for McDonald's? Did we, yeah. did that just happen? And yeah. I feel like that every happened. time I finish a mural. Like, exactly. <laughs> I just got paid to paint for two weeks. <laughs> this is right. So, um, that's what, that, so we ended up doing this work for all these different, really amazing clients, but really that they want that style. They want right. that heartfelt they want to connect. They want that documentary vibe mm -hmm. to it, and that's what we do. It's our we're a one trick pony, man. That's all we can do. But it's cool. Yeah, but people like, want it so far. You found a niche. We did. That works. We love it. I'm so happy for you too, man. I uh, I take full credit. <laughs> full credit. <laughs> Just for 100. If you come through my class and you succeed in life, I take full credit. If you fail, that's how I you know. 
He just took one class. What's the big deal? My mom is the most universally creative human being I have ever encountered. She, uh, I got a little sliver of her thing, you know. It, yeah. But oh my gosh, she um, she's completely self-taught. That was awesome. And she paints. She does oil painting. She can draw. She makes stained glass windows. Oh, that's cool. She does builds doll houses. She does finished carpentry. She makes um, she makes Christmas ornaments. You know, everybody has a little little Christmas village thing at their house or Halloween yeah. village or whatever. Yeah. So I go down to the dollar store or whatever it is and just buy, you know, that stuff. My mom bought, she buys the houses, but she buys them raw, like just white. And, and then she like... paints every single one. I'm talking like bricks, cobblestones, window panes, oh, that's serious cool. detail, serious, serious detail. She's amazing. Yeah, so she makes all the stained glass windows. She has them all in her house and she builds inserts. She does, oh, she does needle points, she does crochet, anything with thread. She can build, she can do needle points that look like oil paintings. They're oh, so that's fine. Cool. She has a she has a magnifying glass this big. She does these ones where it's so like the, the standard needle point like a grandma did, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's the whatever they call it. Yeah. She has she does ones where so take a square inch of the standard needle point. However many threads are in that square inch, she does them times four. So okay. they are four times tinier. How long does that take? Years. Okay. Years. She has one that she did for my dad to, to well, we had a hurricane. Right. Did you, did you hear about this? Yeah. The we, had, the, the, we had a little thing. Um, but that delayed her a little bit. But she, if she had one that took her, I don't know, five years. Staying this far away from it, it looks like an oil painting. I don't it's, have the patience. I don't have the patience. <laughs> I don't have the patience. I don't have the focus. That's so impressive. That's where she is just, but yeah, that's my mom. So that was, uh, I grew up watching her make art, which is, which is, I did not realize what a special thing that was, right? To have a parent who is an artist. Oh yeah. And cause I thought, you know, doesn't everybody's mom <laughs> like go to classes and learn how to make stained glass windows? Doesn't like, uh, no, your mom doesn't do this that? This isn't a thing? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> My mom does. My mom has power tools. She has a wood shop. We come to our so, house like, oh man, your dad's shop is rad. I'm like, my dad would, my dad would cut his fingers off when he had to go in there. So you could, you got the whole home dabbler thing. Very honest. <laughs> and my mom's also a landscape architect type. Like she can do, yeah, yeah. That's where I got the gardening. I got the handiness. Yeah. I got the, she does all the home repairs around her house. That is so cool. She's amazing. Yeah. She's German. She, she has that German severity. You know, that, that kind of thing. That is she sort of, from Germany? She is. She was oh, born cool. in East Germany. Okay. I'm gonna make a documentary about my mother one day. You absolutely should. I'm serious. She was born that in East Germany cool. in 1957. Her parents were in the Air Force, um, in uh, of course post World War II Germany, mm -hmm. and they um, adopted her out of a Catholic orphanage. She was six years old, didn't speak any English at all. They smuggled her through because they were finishing the Berlin Wall and got her out, put her on a boat, or to America. No English, didn't know her parents. I mean, it's crazy, super dramatic. My mom. That's so cool. Yeah, her life is way more, way more interesting <laughs> than mine. It's crazy. But she is a purebred artist. So, like, um, I am not. And it took me forever to realize that, oh, wait a minute. I'm artistic and I understand artists, but I don't have the patience or the focus <laughs> or the determination or the commitment to find a medium and stick like painting. Right. Like JD is a painter. It. I can't do it. I can dab I can dabble. That's where I, literally where the name home dabble came. I dabble around. But then I realized, oh wait, 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 wait. What I do is I manage other creatives. I'm a producer. That's what yeah. I that's I know yeah. I know the creative brain because um, Courtney, my business partner, is a purebred artist like my mom. They just want to make. Never yeah. made me talk to a person, <laughs> never made me do a client thing, never just let me make, you know. And so that's the balance. If you don't have somebody who can, who can do all the other stuff, then they just end up frustrated artist in their, you know, garage. You do a great job, by the way. You, know, I don't, I mean, you can put this on the air if you want. Of me flattering you. <laughs> but I. But listen, and this is this is real talk. I because part of my job at We Wall Films is to interview people. Right. I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people around the country. Okay. Yeah. I'm a really good interviewer. Put that out. There. And he's but a really good writer. Oh, good writer. But binds the two a lot. <laughs> yes, but I tell you, what you do, sitting here painting and talking to people and doing this, and being able to keep that conversation, I can't. I couldn't do it for a million bucks. <laughs> I'm not serious about that. That's so. That's from one interviewer to another. I'm telling you, man. Well, thank you. You're very, very good at that. That's 
Now, I, feel like that's I set all that up, you just better be damn good because now I just set you up. Yeah. I am a walking example of adult ADHD. This is what it looks like. <laughs> so, oh my God, how do you how do you do all these things? It's like, if I don't do these things, I will explode. I will just cave in on myself because my brain- <laughs> Cave in like a dying star. <laughs> you know, right? Artists are, look, artists are like this. Artists are predictable. They're all hyperactive. They're all, a little bit distracted all the time. And we all what have he's a, saying is we all have a mental illness. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Am I wrong? wrong? Am I wrong? You're not. And there's a reason why we, anyway, so it's, you have to get it out of you. That's real, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it very much is, yeah. yeah. But so yeah, I do a lot of things. And I, um, I, 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 I was, Courtney and I started We Wall Films when I was 45 years old. Are you, how old are you now? I turned 48. Last week. I didn't know that. Thanks for noticing my birthday. I did not know you were almost. I told you happy birthday. I didn't know how old you were. No, I didn't know you were almost. Thanks for putting it like that. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm, <sorry. laughs> I'm in my I'm in my late middle forties. Is what I late middle. <laughs> my late middle forties. Yes, I'll be. I just turned forty eight years old. So I was. Um, yeah, so I've done lots of things. I owned a child care center. Do you know that? Yeah, I bet you didn't know that. Yeah. I owned a child care center when I was very young. And then I had a property maintenance business um, because I like to be outside and I'm good with my hands and you know that sort of stuff. That's, and then that's where the that kind of home dabbler blog came from. Mm -hmm. I love the garden and to do that stuff. And, um, and I'm a writer. I like That's one of the ways I express myself is I'm, I write. The thing, yeah, so Corkery, I have a personal blog, because here's the yeah. thing. So, and I'll link that, too, because it's also interesting. Link it all, yeah, mm -hmm. um, all the links. But I, so I write for We Wall Films. We have a blog at We Wall Films. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote for Home Dabber, of course, and did all that stuff. But but then I have this writing that I do that just for me, like I just have ideas, things I want to write about that don't fit anywhere else. Uh -huh. And so I started a blog just literally as a vanity project, so I had somewhere to write the stuff. Mm -hmm. I just, when it, when it occurs to me, so it's something I want to write about. Yeah, so I've written for it about everything from college students to abortion. Mm -hmm. Like, is it just when it occurs to me and I have something I want to write about? That's quirky. Yeah. So, hyperactive. But I find that when I say that, when I, but it's funny, we've done a very bad job of training young people. Mm -hmm. I see it as a teacher, I see it as a business owner. Yeah. I see it as a parent. Um, I did. I, my wife and I, we did a fantastic job with our kids. But other people, is you, you tell people or you in, you insinuate that they have to pick a thing in life. Oh, yeah. Like, what's your thing? Like, well, screw you. I don't have a thing. I have things. I have multiple. <laughs> things. And those things change and they evolve and they, right. you know, they grow. And sometimes they turn into a business and sometimes they just... Turn into sometimes it's just a hobby that takes up too much of your time. <laughs> sometimes it turns right, <laughs> right. So you 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 are like a unicorn because you started a business that doesn't make money for other businesses that don't make money. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm just rolling in the a non-profit, a non-profit, non which is a lovely thing, by the way. I mean, it is. It's a really lovely thing, and you can tell um, how meaningful it is to people to come take these classes and do that. Yeah, it's great. You're a good human being. You're better than I am. I want money. <laughs> so what is the new um, the mini podcast that you are doing on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. Is it on YouTube, TikTok? It's, it's on, on all. It's on things. all the things, right? <laughs> it's on all the things. It's a lovely. Thing. It's a beautiful thing about TikTok is I make one video and publish it, you know, 18 places. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's called the Business of Creative Business Podcast. Mm -hmm. And it is a it's Very sort of straightforward a, in the name. Yeah, it's I, I, I like to have <laughs> nice succinct names. But because I come out of the business world, I know, and I and, and I own a creative business, a business that makes money being creative. Right. I work with creatives all the time, every day. And one thing I know is that many of them yearn to make money and have a business out of their art. And almost none of them know how to do that at all. They are clueless and helpless and babes in the woods and nervous and all that stuff. Okay, so 
with Wall Films, we have made a business of being creative. Uh -huh. So I started this little podcast. It's, I don't know, the episodes are just a few minutes long. Yeah, they're like seven minutes. Yeah, because it's like, like uh, me sitting in my office. I had to have something I could do that wouldn't be a huge level of effort. You know, like painting while you're talking to another human <laughs> being. And all, like I, I'm just sitting alone in my office talking to my... <laughs> and, um, and in each episode I share one little piece of business advice specifically for creatives, mm -hmm. the business of, bus of creative business pocket. Okay. How to turn your creative into a business. And I get one little tip from what I've learned or something I've read. It's mostly what I've read, taking ideas from other people, which is the best way to do it. <laughs> best way to do it. Let somebody else live through all the pain and then just read their book. Right? And then you learn. And then I learn from them. And then I, I, then I share. A lot of time. Yeah. So that's what that is. So if you are a creative and you want, you always wanted to do something and make money at it, well then give it a go. It's yeah. helpful. I hope it is. And I like it because it's stuff that I try to share it to my Instagram story and stuff for other people to see because it's it's stuff that I have learned over the past year and a half, two years freelancing, or that I learned prior to that when I was still teaching and trying to start freelancing. Mm -hmm. It's stuff that I kind of learned the hard way, and you make it very succinct in seven minutes instead of several I've been projects. Living the, I've been living through the pain, man, for 25 <laughs> years, so yeah. And, you know, some of us kind of end up accidentally making money doing creative stuff. Yep. Like I started muraling because I decided to paint a mural in my classroom and, and yeah, social and, media happened. And happened. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, and so if you're wanting to do something like that, it's a really good resource because it's like you said, it's like six, seven minutes an episode. Yeah. I one the other day was quick. four and a half minutes. Yeah. yeah. I know my mom could have done a business with her art. I know she could have if she grew up in a different era. Oh yeah. She didn't have the resources. She didn't have the background. So we didn't have all this. It is very easy to forget that if you are a creative person and you want to find an audience and you want to grow something, you have never in human history lived in a better time. Never. It is, you pick up your phone and show the world what you can do and they will find it. Yeah. And that's what happened. Yeah. You put your teacher and you post a thing and people go, oh my God, JD. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's how it happens. Just start making stuff, put it out there, and it might shock you. I mean, that's all of Palmetto Paints, everything has come from Facebook. Yeah. And say what you will about Facebook, it's got its issues. But it's all come from Facebook. All of our events are Facebook, all of our yeah. business has been done on Facebook. We just got a website last year yeah. because we wanted to start selling tickets ahead of time. Yeah. I mean, it's. Look, here's the thing about social media generally, but Facebook specifically, because TikTok's the thing right now, but it won't be forever. Right. Um, people, especially young people, young creatives, turn their nose up at Facebook. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm here to tell you right now that, and JD said the same thing, I have built an entire business on Facebook posts. Yeah. A thousand yeah. percent. Yeah. I built, because you know what? The people who have money are older than you are if you're 19 years old, and they are on Facebook. And every business that wants to hire Everyone. you to do something is on Facebook. And LinkedIn. And LinkedIn. You should yeah. be putting your art on LinkedIn. Don't, don't look at me that way. You should I'm be putting your art on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Get on LinkedIn. <laughs> people with money. Yeah. You want to, you know, so anyway, yeah. It, it, but it's it's such a special and exciting time. It's easy to make good content now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should be out there just making stuff, put it in the world, and it might surprise you somebody coming along with a check. Yeah. How exciting is that? Yeah. That didn't happen 30 years ago. You had to have an agent or some kind of middleman person. So anyway, that, I, that's my, my un, like I tell my students, my, my Uncle Kevin's advice to you young creator. <laughs> See, mine is starting to look like the opening of like a We Walk Films horror movie. Yeah, and I kind of like it. I kind of do. <laughs> I'm kind of into it. <laughs> if We Walk Films ever did a, 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 a documentary on the zombie apocalypse, which we're open to, by the way, if anybody has uh, want to make that project. <laughs> if, you, if you got a screenplay right If you have it, just we're, <laughs> we're down for it. Hey, can I, speaking of, of movies and documentaries, can I do some breaking news on, this, on the show? Go for it. Okay, and my partners in this might kill me for saying this out loud. I'm a big believer in if you have something in your mind, you need to start saying it to people. Because mm -hmm. it, one, it makes you live up to your words. Mm -hmm. Two, there's some kind of power in it. 
right? Oh yeah. I'm not an overly religious guy, but there is something about putting things out in the air. It, it makes you focus. Yeah. Anyway, breaking news, Panama well, City, because you mentioned news. how much I love downtown, how much I love Panama City, and I could talk about that all night long. I just love it, love it, love it where we are right now, because I've lived here for 35 years, and it's easy to forget how recent all the cool things are. Literally like the last five years or so. Or less. Some of it less than that. Or less. Yeah. Um, and for those of us who are almost 50 and realize, and remember, and remember <laughs> walking up and down Harrison or doing a play in the Martin when we were 14 and going, why can't this, it should be so much cooler down here. Why isn't it cooler? This place is amazing. Why does it suck? Right? Why are, why does it why suck? are all the buildings boarded up? Why aren't there uh, cool businesses? That's happening now. And so we're living yes. in a super special time. I could not be more excited. So in any way I can, I want to be a part of it. One way, that's why we also did really we did craft. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to highlight the locals, you know. Um, so one way, and I'm putting this out there, sorry Jen and Jason if you're going to be mad at me. We're going to make a documentary film festival oh, that's for awesome. downtown Panama City. And it's going to be the premier documentary film festival in the Southeast. Yeah, that's our, that's our goal. That's a great idea. That's our goal. Um, we're, I'm putting it out there. We're actually working, um, finalizing our creative and our branding right now. Oh, cool. We have a rough date in mind uh, when we're going to do this. It's going to be early 2024 because we because none of us have ever done this and we want to we want time right, do it right. to do yeah. it well. Yeah. But I'm out there hustling it, and like matter of fact, this Friday I have a phone call with Deirdre Hodge, who is the former director of the Savannah Film Festival. Like we're talking to you know. So cool. We're going to make a documentary film festival for downtown Panama City. Imagine. That's going to be really cool. Imagine coming down on a nice, cool spring night. Mm -hmm. It's dark and all everything's well lit and awesome down here. And kind of like Will Thompson does at the Songwriters Festival. Right. The whole thing's going to be walkable. You're never going to have to get to your car. You park downtown, you go get a beer, whatever. And over at, say, the Cultural Hub of Northwest Florida, there's something playing over mm -hmm. there. Center for the Arts has one over there. We might have one in the press. I don't know. We might, we're going to have a boxing club. Uh, and there's documentary films playing. And you wander around downtown just watching films. It, it's going to be awesome. So that's my newest project. That's awesome. I just put that in the universe and on record now. So here we go. <laughs> March 2024. Oh. And he's going to text me in the morning and be like, you edit that out. Hey, so about, <laughs> so about that film festival. Yeah, that was... Sorry, we're not doing that anymore. No, we're doing it, man. That's because awesome we need it. Idea. We need yes, it. Yes, yeah. It's one of those ideas when you when you say it out loud, yeah. you, every you just like that's a, we have we have to do that. You want to talk about anxiety? <laughs> let me get let me get hold on. <laughs> we cut to that. So, did you want to do you want a smoother transition? No, you. <laughs> okay. You want to talk about anxiety? It's funny the second time. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Let's talk about anxiety. We're here. Because you, because I, by the, by the way, because I, you know, I do watch the show. I'm not, I'm not just. I, I watch this, this show. I love this show. What a clever idea! But one of the things I really love that you guys do is you talk about mental health a lot, mm -hmm. and the importance of mental health, and the importance of talking about. And even when I watch other people's shows, I say, "Andrew Jezebel, we somehow talk about mental health." Yeah, <laughs> it just it's important. Fun. It's important. And I tell you what, man, um, because I think everybody, to a degree has some kind of, I'm a, I don't know if you can tell, I'm a super wired up dude. Like I am, um, right? <laughs> now, the good thing about that is, is that you can be creative and do lots of things. The, the downside to that is, your brain can feed on itself, man. It'll, oh, yeah. you know, it'll mess you up. Lots of creatives are this way. Mm -hmm. It's funny when, it's an interesting, because I, because I teach, it's one of my favorite things about teaching is I get, a, I get to uh, feedback from very young people Mm -hmm. And what I've learned is two things. One is they think I'm more together than I am, <laughs> right? Because I'm grown up and I have a bunch of jobs and I, and that's and and yeah, I'm a competent human being, right? But those who know me best, and there are many, but it's my wife, Courtney, my business partner, um, stuff. How much I struggle with that stuff, with anxiety and with uh, and at times depression. I think it is, I've come to believe this, is hearing it from so many other creatives. It's almost part of the package, isn't it? Oh. It's almost part of the other, it's yeah. the other side of the creative brain. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to explain that, 
but it is the truth. So people who look like they're very together, and, and if you're sitting over there and you're nervous and you're worried and you're all the things, that's, that's almost a normal experience, especially for creative people, I find. And I'm not saying other, other people who aren't super creative don't experience those things. Of course, right. of course they do. Yeah. But I'm saying the, the flavor, because that's what I like to talk about, is what, the creative brain, right? So you know what I think it is? Is that we have imagination. We can visualize. Overactive imagination. Well, we can visualize. <laughs> One thing when you start making art, you probably experience this with murals, is you'll start describing a mural. Uh -huh. This is going to be there, and, and the Loch Ness Monster is going to be there, and this is going to be there. <laughs> and you see it. You're looking at a blank wall, and you see what's going to be on that wall. And most human beings don't have that Just faculty. Looking at you with their mouth open. They're like, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. What do they see? They say, yeah. show it to me, and I'll know what you're talking about. Show mm -hmm. me a sketch. Show me something. Right. Okay. Musicians can do this. They can hear the song before they write it. They can, or, mm -hmm. Okay, that's an amazing and rare ability in human beings. Here's a trick. And the downside is that we can imagine lots of good scenarios and we can imagine lots of really bad scenarios in painful detail. We see it happening. We feel it happening. We're empathetic. Mm -hmm. That I think is, I think maybe where that comes from is, is the imagination. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the people, and sometimes the people that seem the most together are hiding the most. They're struggling the most. 99% of the time. Yeah, <laughs> so that's just how that goes. But yeah, I guess too, so this is another thing and you can tell me and, and, and feel free to just cut me off anytime. But, uh, is for young, especially young, you know, creative type people, they think, oh, I'm anxious and I'm nervous and I'm maybe even depressed and I'm worried and I'm all those things. Those other artists, that other creative person, clearly doesn't feel those feelings that I have. They have it all together. Therefore, I can't be successful. Right. I know that's a real feeling. And that, I'm here to tell you. That's. Garbage. I'll put the bleed Garbage. over it, but that's bleep. Put a big black. As, yeah, that's <laughs> not real. Having, and again, this has just been in the last like year and a half, just getting into the art community, which is very small in Panama City. Yeah, so you but get growing. to know everybody very quickly. They're growing. And it is growing, which is, I love to see, because yep. it's boring if there's five of us all doing the same thing. Yep. Um, it's everybody. It, I, yeah. It's you the know, human condition. I, Heather Parker, because she won't mind. Because Heather <laughs> is, oh my God. Let's talk about Heather Parker. Heather Parker she does so. is so, yeah. she's like Jason Kretzer. Yeah. She's, if you look at any significant art thing, mm -hmm. you're going to see either Heather or Jason. They are always, always a part of it. Sometimes both. <laughs> Sometimes both. Heather is such, uh, like, and she does it purely to see more art. Yes. That's all she yeah. She is just the best. Love Heather. But she, last year, year before, I can't remember, um, she'd seen some of my art and asked if I wanted to work with her over at Chautauqua because she's got a bunch of projects over there that she needed help with. Yep. And so I worked with her several days a week, sometimes one day a week, but I was working with her all the time for like almost a year. And she was, I thought, the most put together artist in town. Yeah. And she is very put together. Yeah. But it was just, it was great seeing, oh, she's also human. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's a person. <laughs> yeah. And everything that goes along with that. And is very honest about the fact that she is a person. <laughs> yes. When you were a student, did you think, did you know I was like this at all? Like what? Like all hyperactive and yeah. crazy. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. I, I never know how I'm coming <laughs> off. I don't know. I just. I of... didn't until one day, and I remember it very vividly. We got him off topic, and we stayed off topic for the whole class. Oh, yeah. It doesn't... only happened once, but that day I was like, oh, okay. He tries really hard to, to hold like it in. Focus. I do. I try really hard. It was hard toward to... the end of the semester, and we really didn't. I think we were just... Pretty much We done. had like one paper left to write or something. Like yeah. It wasn't much, but yeah. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of self-control when you have a, you know, one of those brains. And it's why a lot of artists flit, right? They flit from this and flit to that, mm -hmm. and they never quite... And I, I understand that. To be able to focus on one thing and do it really well um, is hard. And it's especially hard for those those very busy brains. Um, this is this came out better than I thought. I wouldn't call it good. <laughs> but it's less bad than I thought it might be. I think it's fun. You say, did you say fun or fine? I think it's fun. <laughs> okay. 
I, fun or fine are both insults. They're both like, it's like, oh, how fun. How fun. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I love is because, and you probably do this too, with murals and with other artwork, the gift of the artist, to me, is that it's it's one thing that to express yourself, right? All artists want to express what's inside them. Mm -hmm. One of the neat things about doing documentaries and doing film is I get to reflect back to people the best version of themselves. <laughs> we all have something in our mind, a way we we think we want to be seen or way right. we wish we were seen or sound or whatever and our job is to come into a room and light that room the right way and mm -hmm. to ask you questions the right way and edit all that stuff together so you're the best version of you what a neat thing to do for money right a what really a neat great, job to have great it, way to, to look at that yeah and all i have to do is get you to talk and then we're going to take this and we're going to make it we're going to give you the picture you always wish you had in your mind of you and we get that feedback all the time i didn't know i could look that good oh my he God. loves what he does oh which my is gosh. why i wanted him to come we it. love <laughs> it we love it i will and yeah so like my interviews go way longer than they probably should because i just get into it you know courtney yeah. i'll look over at courtney at the camera and she'll let every once in a while I'll be like i'm about to run out of storage space bro <laughs> like batteries are dying I'm running out bring it in bring my ending right <laughs> but if you like people and you're interested in human beings who are endlessly fascinating, it is the best job on earth. Mm -hmm. We just, we can't get over how lucky and great it is that people trust us with that. And then all we have to do is show them, but reflect back to them the best version of themselves. Who doesn't want to, come on, who doesn't want to do that? And do you do that with, I mean, because I can imagine a, an, a, a client. I saw you did one, like a three-story elevator thing, which mm -hmm. I thought was amazing, right? Was it like that? This, this client comes to you and says, hey, JD, I had this thing in my brain, man. I want something cool right here, and you were able to give it to them. Oh, yeah. What they, a gift. They pretty much just said, we love Blue Mountain Beach. Yeah. Run with that. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's the artist's skill. That's all I need. Yeah. Blue Mountain Beach. Got yeah. it. I'll, off, and off you go. And then you give them that, that back, mm -hmm. and I bet they were bowled over, man. I bet oh, they yeah. ride their elevator up and down their house just to, uh, right? <laughs> I would. What a special thing. The world needs artists, needs them, needs them. It's not optional, not optional. And then I look back at my mom, who is this unbelievable artist, and knowing that she could have turned this into a business or turned it, she could have been a million different kinds of art form, but she just lived in a different time and she was a woman. And they said, Janet, um, you can be a school teacher or a secretary or a nurse, pick one. That was what women, or a housewife, obviously, that, that was your, well, she's a creative genius. Nobody went, oh, you're a creative genius. Why don't you go try and do something with that? Be a landscape architect, be a painter, be an interior designer. She could do all those things. Uh -huh. Nobody, but now we have those options um, for us and our, our children. And it's special if you're out there and you're creative and you, you can make money with this. No, mm -hmm. it's never been more accessible. How, how exciting is that? There are, I mean, literally there are kids out there that are 15 years old that get a following on whatever their thing is and they're making money. They're making more money than their parents. Yeah. Doing art, whatever their art happens to be. I love my painting. I didn't think I was going to, honestly. I love your painting too. You can take mine. Can I have both of them? Yeah. I want both of them. Yeah. Cause I- If y'all ever make a zombie movie, I want this to be the open. <laughs> You can even see it, right? Just like jittering. Can, yeah, I love it. it. The, the jittering, you can see the mist coming up behind it, right? You can see the... You can tell I'm in Halloween mode right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do we show them to the camera? What do we do? Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Okay, ready? Here's look. Ta-da. Do they look basically the same? <laughs> we've, got, we've got the zombie apocalypse, and we walk on this form, and yeah. then down on the farm. Sunflowers and, <laughs> some flowers and chickens. With the chickens. I love this. What a great show. I love I love getting to talk to you. I haven't like sat down to talk to you in a while. Because <laughs> every time I see you when it's at, at some event, event or some sort of something. Something some where we can't just like talk for an hour. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for coming on finally. <laughs> I'll probably have you back tomorrow. I wore you episode, down. Because I feel like we could do another like forty five minutes. <laughs> I'm down anytime, dude. Yeah, oh yeah, I'd love to. What a thank, great show. Thank you guys for watching. Um, thank you to MySpace for our studio space. Yep. Thank you to We Walk Films and Kevin for coming on. I'll have all that stuff linked um, in the description. And again, thank you guys for watching. 
and I'm going to try to have an episode in November, but there will for sure be one in December. Um, Alex and I are going to come back on and do kind of a State of the Union with Pompano Pants nice. <laughs> like we did last year. So thank you guys for watching.